Um, well, we just had a mate's trip booked, a uh, lake exclusive. Um, and it was just luckily enough that we was able to travel just after the travel restrictions were relaxed. So we got, it was just luck really that we was able to go. It was a bit like 50-50 for quite a while, like anything is at the minute. Nothing's planned, is it? No, we just don't know. Um, so yeah, one minute it was off, then it was on, then it was off, then it was on, and then last thing, it was on. And away we went. There was four of us coming from, as mates, all I said was at the beginning of the trip, I don't want a blank and I want a PB. PB would have been £40 for me. Well, I just wanted a £40. Uh, PB would have, just a few ounces shy of £40 would have been a PB. Um, didn't care if it was a common, a mirror. But it's funny enough, at the beginning of the trip, we sat in the clubhouse and we all picked one we'd like off the wall. Um, my one was a very British looking fish. Scaly, long, something that you would see in Oxford. Um, that's what I picked and I, I don't even know how big it was. I just like the look of it. I think it was about 50, 55 pound. Um, everyone else picked theirs. I didn't, funny enough, I didn't even look at the commons. Um, that wasn't on my radar at all. Ah, well, yeah, with the swims, that was easy because we didn't bother doing a draw because we had a walk round and before we did a draw, we just said, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Where do you? And it just so happens that all of us wanted that the other one didn't. So that was it. I chose the beach. Reason being is um, I did do a little bit of homework and noticed the beach does, doesn't do big hits of fish, but it does do some of the good ones. Um, so also number two reason was it's not mega long range fishing in there. Um, you know, it's short to medium range, you know, up to 26 wraps, which I can do quite easy. Um, well, as long as the weather's permitting. Um, so that's why I chose that. The other boys chose theirs uh, for one or another reason, but that is how I ended up in there. Um, I was f fishing at um, 26 and a half wraps um, and baiting up at 26. It's about 20 foot of water. So in my mind, it was, I was fishing on my bait. Um, I was fishing crumb, crumbs, manila, um, hemp, and maize and manila liquid. So I know in 20 foot of water, you spawn, it's gonna, you, there was a big spread happening. Um, that's how I fished for the first two days. Got a lot of liners. The fish were very active in the night time, getting liners non-stop. So what I decided to do was, with you know a little bit of guidance from someone who knows the lake quite well, was I decided to bring my rigs back and fish at 25 and a half wraps and carry on baiting up at 26. So in my mind, I was fishing on the front or off of my baited spot. Um, thinking that obviously riggy fish, they can come in, pick up bait um, without having any lines, any rigs in their face and hopefully come across the hook baits, you know, uh, in due course throughout the week. Um, so that was the plan and I stuck to that for a couple of, two or three days um, before anything happened. It was very tricky to sit on my hands. Um, everyone knows what I'm like, I like a move and I always feel like I need to be doing something. I always feel like I should have been getting a bite and I, and I wasn't. But I was almost tied down by people, you know, they said just sit, wait. The bite came on Tuesday seven o'clock oh, it rained all night rained all night long i was getting liners all night they dropped off but i can just remember i woke up it was about half past five with liners non-stop the rain was banging down on the bivy and i thought oh god please i don't really want to have a bite right now but anyway eventually left hand rod picked up indicator slammed against the alarm so i thought right i need to go and have a look at that Pulled, I had the door down because it was pouring down all night, coming into me. Went out, had a look, noticed the indicator was just sitting against the alarm. And that was that. So I thought, okay, I'll have a little investigation. And it just started slowly, tick, tick, tick. So I thought, right, I'm on. Picked up into it and it just felt like a dead weight. Although, I would like to say it beat me up for a while and it didn't. It came in. It just came in. It felt like I was just reeling in a bag of sand off the bottom of the lake. When it did eventually, and I could 
well, I, I knew it was a good fish, but you know, I was just hoping, oh, I hope it's, you know, I think this is going to be a PB, it feels heavy. And then it just popped up in front of me and I thought, Jesus Christ. Um, and I just scooped it up before it, it wanted to do anything. I wouldn't have been able to stop it if it wanted to do what it wanted to do. I would, you know, so I just, I just scooped up. But then I did realise at that point when I went to scoop it up in the landing net, it didn't go in. I had to do it lengthways, if that makes sense. Rather than it just wouldn't go in. I had to just sort of scoop the, the tail in and scoop it up from underneath, rather than it just come over the cord. I couldn't. It was too big. Looked into the net and thought, that's a PB. Uh, one of my friends who I was with um, rang me, he said, do you want me to come round and give you a hand getting it in the sling? Um, I said, yeah. Anyway, he came round and I said, yeah, I think, I think it's a 50. Bear in mind, I've got no gauge of size of fish over 40 pound. Um, I just haven't. I, I just thought, you know, I looked at the top of it, it looked wide, I thought, yeah. He looked in the net and said, no, that's not a 50, mate. That's, that's a big fish. Really? Yeah, it is. Anyway, so put it in the sling. Rung the bailiff. While the bait was waiting for bait James to come round and you know give us a hand with everything, um, I thought I'd go on the website and have a look at what commons are in there that are big. Um, we, we I rounded it down to three. I think there was one that could have been it could have been one that was mid fifty, and I knew it was bigger than that. I knew that was the minimal size it was going to be. There was one it could have been that could have been upper 60, 70. And then it could have been the other, the other big one, which was the Immaculate Common, which was 90. Anyway, zipped up, James Bailiff come round, a few other people in the swim by then, all a bit anticipating what's going on. He opened up the slim for him to look and he said, yeah, that's it, Immaculate Common. That is it, that's when it sunk in. And I, I asked him, you know, how big it came, he, he said it came out in April. To him, James, the bailiff had it, at 90 in April. So at that point, I thought, hang on, we're now in mid-December. This is going to be a good one. It was a blur. The whole thing was a blur. I remember us picking it up and looking, and then as the, now, the needle went round, it was like, oh my God. And then when it eventually, 96.8, after that, it was, it was a complete, um, well, you just don't believe it. Yeah, 96.8. Like, who, who thinks they're going to have a common 96.8 in their net? Nah, not me. Not me, I just wanted a 40. <laughs> That's what I wanted. I wanted to go jog out the car, I wanted to catch a 40 pound carp. I got two and a bit, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I had my mate Luke with me. He was, look, the fish is so wide. You know, normally when you pick a carp up, you sort of, you scoop it up and you sort of flick it over on your, on your forearms and then you hoist it up. But obviously this was wider than my forearms. So, I couldn't do that, so we obviously everything was in the water because you, you can't pick fish that big up out of the water. It's just not, it's just, you just can't do it. It's not safe for the fish and it's just, yeah, it's too big. So in the water we went um, and obviously it, on the floating mat, my mate Luke had to turn the fish up so I could sort of pick it up and then we'd pick it up like this and then they'd pull the mat away and then we'd go, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, and then quickly, quickly, mat back, drop down. Well, that that happened many times and I couldn't hoist it up. So in the end, we had to just get rid of the mat, keep the fish in the water, hand over its face so it doesn't want to sort of swim off. And then every now and again, when I got a bit of energy, lift it up, drop back down, lift it up, drop, and then turn it around and, and again. It took a lot of photos, yeah. But obviously out of the lot, we've, we've managed to get a couple decent, well, more than a couple. James done some, James and Bailiff done some superb photos. You know, like when you've got a good fish on, well, anyone who enjoys carp fishing, you, you know, you've got a good fish on, your knees knock, you shake, adrenaline. If you don't get that, then you're not enjoying fishing anymore. Well, that feeling I had, I had all day, all day long. I, I, was, I had a shower, come out, had my breakfast. My knees were still knocking, I was still shaking. It took me all day to come down from that. And I didn't catch the rest of the week. They just didn't come back in. Um, but uh, and I was happy with that because if you're going to pick one fish to have out of the week, that's the one, isn't it? That's the one. Um, obviously, the other boys who come with us caught um, Luke, my mate of mine, had a 75 mirror, which is a little been overlooked a little bit and a bit unfairly, really. But 
when someone's had a 75 any other day of the week, everyone would be like, oh my God, is that like, is unbelievable? And it is unbelievable, but it just so happens that the person who's with him had a 96 and it sort of, sh it shadowed it out, the poor bugger. But, you know, he had a, that was a great fish. That was the only one he had. And then um, the other boys who were with us had, I think they had three each, biggest out of them. They had a couple of 40s each and some of the stockies. Lovely fish as well. Um, but yeah, if I could take one, I think I took the right one.